How you guys doing? Welcome back. Today is March 23rd, 2022. 3-2, 3-2, 2, -2, 2, -2. A fun date. That's nice. Welcome. If you are new, my name is Evan. This is By the Bulls Trading, the only trading platform, service, YouTube guy with piercings and tattoos who screams at you that supports, encourages, and almost makes you take your own trading by the bulls. Just take it, grip it, rip it. Let's do it, baby. Let's get into this. If you don't know, we're going to be talking about eight great stocks today. Eight stocks that I think tomorrow into then friday and then into next week are really good stocks to watch for shorts longs options day trading it all works fine here if you don't know now you know uh what we're going to be covering as well is that if you want to check out my free course on my youtube page 25 free lessons all there for you go check it out it'll help you learn what we're doing i can't stress enough the volume profile lesson is huge i don't want to like self plugs so or not some loser shill guy but the volume profile lesson is massive go check it out i'm gonna talk about volume profile today if you've never used it i suggest you use it please lastly some recommendations firstly the theta three are the options guys that i use i talk to they're in my community they're my sweet baby angels I love you so make sure you check out their channel i'll probably put their photo up here or a link in the description box down below nonetheless if you enjoy my content you will love their content secondly before i move on our cats here i got this cat six years ago you may be thinking wow he's big as shit for a six-year-old cat well no i got i got him through my fiance look at that today is me and hers six year anniversary uh of being dating now we are engaged now so we have a different date for that in decombre but i also just wanted to mention hey you know what y'all should know dr rogers and me have been together for that long she's a doctor i took five years to get a bachelor's degree why she chose me beyond me so with that being said eight great picks uh wish her happy anniversary wish me too but i want her to feel special so uh we got eight great picks today we talking about and on the screen right now supports resistances trend lines patterns ema lines volume profile our side the stochastic indicator and the vortex indicator the 10th thing being love so those 10 things are what makes up my trading plan that's different than a trading structure the class covers all that so you want to know what we're doing in that order every stock let's get into it thanks for being here like subscribe bell notification you idiots so first is BSX, B6. So Boston Scientific Corp is a really nice stock. What I'm looking at is to go long here. The reason being, our support, our strong support is 4150, but we have a really nice one here at 42 as well. Plenty of action bounces off here. I didn't mark it because I didn't think this was going to hold. I'm still not confident it's going to hold. So I think our support's very clear. Even more clear is our resistance. Anywhere near 4450 to 45 is the you know unloading zone. Folks are getting their getting their you know, Jolly is getting their money. Swinging and day trading into that is totally fine. When it comes to our trend line, it's nice. One, two, three. Three solid hits. Again, any one of you, any one of me, idiots, can actually make a trend line from A to B. But A, B, C, at the least, shows really good movement and a really good consistency. Less than three, I don't count it. More than four, I love it. So at three, it's a solid hit. It's nothing amazing, but still really good. What we could also see is the pattern forming. This is an ascending triangle forming. Look, folks said 38's fair, sold at 44. Then they said 40's fair, and then sold at 44. And they said, actually, 41's fair, and then sold at, you guessed it, 44. So this means that bulls have all the power in this transaction. Yes, it took two months for a full move. Yes, it took a month for a full move. This is not some quick trading kind of thing unless it gets really nice momentum. You can make 10, 12% in a few days. But this is a very bullish setup. Lastly is a volume profile. What we can see clearly is that the POC is a gravitational node. It is the highest volume node on this time frame. It wants us to be touching it. The more you want, the more you hit this area, the stronger it's going to get. This is those two ways, though. It's a pro and a con almost every single time. The reason being the POC is also going to be a hardest resistance, as I'm saying. So we tap this, getting over it's a real piece of work. The good news is it is gravitational. It's like a planet. It wants to pull us closer. Imagine on a 2D plane, this is like the sun, and we're kind of rotating around it, right? It wants us to be here. So with that being said, a three or four percent move seems very likely, especially with the gap here. Every single gap on this time frame has been filled. Almost every single this one hasn't, but almost every single gap across the board will get filled by another candle later on. So to see this is great. Risk again, probably more than I want. Two or three percent to make five or six percent, not great. But 40, 4150 down here, absolute still for BSX. Let's check the indicators. What's so cool is I actually don't scan with or chart with indicators. Also, what's cool is my cat meow meow. 
what we find with indicators is that it shows us four things, momentum, trend, volume, and volatility. These four things help us enter a stock, help us exit a stock, help us plan a trade, trade that plan, helps us with macro markets, help us with goal setting, helps us be consistent, all things we can use in our lives. What it doesn't do is be the only thing that matters. Technical analysis, greater than signed indicators, greater than signed Pittsburgh Steelers. Obvious stuff here, right? So as long as we have good indicators, that's great. If they're bad, eh, it's fine. It's whatever. I may look elsewhere, but with that being said, let's look at the trend, momentum, volume, volatility together. Let's go through it, you sweet, sweet angels. So what we can see is that the EMA lines will be of absolutely no help here. We're below all three. Usually you want to buy into momentum with them. Like, hey, look, I crossed the 10 EMA line. Kerchoo! Or, hey, I crossed the 200 here. Kerchoo! They're all so far away. Risk versus reward seems null and void here. Don't care. What it shows us is that we have value. There's two ways for a beginner under a stock. Value and momentum. Back of your head. Keep it there. Right? What we can see is that value is probably, I don't know, 50 cents lower, 60 cents lower. But what's obvious here is that we're coming down to value, technically speaking. The email line show we have value. Our side it's low. Stochastic, it's low. Bulls are low. Bears are high. If you want me to talk more about the indicators, go watch my course. I don't want to harp on them right now. But this is an obvious great value purchase. One and a half percent lower. So if tomorrow's a red morning or red after hours, BSX is my top watch. So far, it's our first one, but still. Top one to watch if it's a red morning and we kind of see a reversal towards noontime. But BSX, love it just a bit lower. I would definitely watch list it. Next is CRC. I'm going to go for a short here. That's my goal. That's my intention. My plans do change. My plans are sometimes wrong. That's how it goes. But this kind of consolidation to me is quote unquote suspect until I get more strength. The reason being low, 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 low. Though There's much more cases of it hitting the support than really hitting the resistance here, right? It's really coming down. As of recently, this is a lower low, so we have a lower low and a lower high forming, right? If this does break out, I'm not going to be mad. I'll be like, wow, that's actually a great move. But CRC here showing very little life as a technical setup. Support, easy, 39. The resistance here, 46, super clear. We have no trend, which is not a bad thing or a good thing. There's just no trend. Again, as of recently, you could probably argue you have more lower lows and more lower highs across the board. It's not pure TA, so I'm not going to really mention it, but again, lower, low, lower high as of now. The POC, again, is a very strong support. There's a fat chance we bounce here. Fat chance we bounce here, right? But again, even then, that's still a solid 4 or 5% move pretty easily. And if we lose that, it'll become a resistance and work in our favor. Overall, risk versus reward makes a lot of sense here. CRC, easy, short, nonetheless. When it comes to our indicators, we're properly stacked. What that means is that you have price 10, 50, 200. When you have price 10, 50, 200 the other way, that's when you have the trend going against your short. It makes more sense with momentum. Up here, though, if we lose the 10 EMA line, that's our first sign of weakness. Look at this over here. We lose the 10, what happens thereafter? Big old crash, right? We lose the 10, big old crash to the bottom. We lose the 10, big old crash of 5% down. Once you lose that 10 EMA line, that's your first sign of weakness. We're right there. So you want to hold it until we, you know, go long until we lose it. That's fine. But for me, easy short once you lose a 10 EMA line. RSI, it's overbought. Obvious. Stochastic, it's overbought. Obvious. Bulls are super high, bears are super low. CRC is a very easy short here, especially if tomorrow's a red day. This one of the next player fantastic shorts. If it's red, I'm looking at CRC, ICE. If the day is red tomorrow as well, BSX is good for probably then Monday, but I'd definitely check both out. CRC, I do like what I see. I'd definitely watch this dude. Next is ICE, another easy short. This one is um, arguably a better breakout candidate than um, CRC, given the fact that, again, we have higher lows, right? We, it's, they're not a line. It's not perfect. But this does show higher lows and a potential higher high very close here, right? A very small higher high. The issue being long-term lower highs. And again, we do have some form of just what looks like to be you know, was a head, reverse head and shoulders, it failed, came back, failed, and now again, we're showing a lot of red here. Again, I don't want to risk, you know, dollars 2% to see if I can get, you know, 10. That's fine here. Overall, the support's super clear towards 121.50, resistance at 137. Our POC, again, is gravitational. If we do break down like 115, this will be a very strong support. I don't think we're going to see 110 again for a long time. 
but this is gravitational, wants us to come down even further. Looks really good, no real trend line, just a strong resistance trend of lower highs, and again, we're always starting to fall to here. I love what I see for an easy short. When it comes to our indicators, again, the 10 cross under is the first sign of real weakness, especially towards the top here. Three out of three times you've lost that, you've definitely come down farther. We lost that today. If this candle solidifies here and the next one's red for sure, this bad boy's cooked, it's done, it's over, until probably at least 130, 150. And again, you're like, oh, well, it's only 2% or whatever. Durr. Some of y'all in this market have lost 2% a day. You'll take what you get. Take it or leave it. It's up to you. CRC here, overbought, coming down nicely. Um, you know, no real divergences or nothing. It's just coming down nicely. Again, you may see a reverse sooner, like another like retest to take down. Bulls high, bears low. Everything minus the stochastic is definitely screaming. This is a bearish setup. Overall, CR or ICE, I do love what I see. No, I definitely watched this. Dude. That rhymed. Next is KDP. This right now is a good long. Of course, though, as we're watching here, there's a fat chance that this may break the trend line. It looks like it's going to. We'll remove this just to be fair and to be cognizant that you may be seeing, you know, a break down here. So this could go either way. That trend line breaking on the fly. Here's what we can do. I think KDP is still a good long here because the support is so rock solid. The support, I may be a little generous with it. You may be seeing 3640 or so before it really starts to reverse 3650 maybe. But you can use this area as your pivot point. What does that mean? All I'm saying is that at 3650, it's going to tap that spot. Probably like I give it like a 70% chance it's going to tap that spot. You can then decide long or short based on your plans. It does have lower highs. It will have then an equal low. It can reverse and go long or it can go short. The main crux of the issue here and the solution is patience and risk management. What we're going to see at 3650 if it comes down here is that if you want to risk one percent either direction that's all the risk but going long hopefully it'll make at least four or five percent easily it's five to one and it's short will probably be seeing somewhere around five to one as well so being patient waiting for 3650 is not a bad idea at all lower highs higher lows could go either way here i do like what i see for a watch this though and then make your own plans it just lost the 200 RIP to that. If the 50 does cross me at the 200, I would become a bit concerned because when you have that, yeah, see it breaks over it, but it becomes much more sideways and does become to lose that trend. So if you do see the 10 cross under the 200, 50 under 200, it may be a good idea short if you lose 3650, but down here, it is a good value. RSI, it's low. Stochastic is right where you want it. Bulls are low. Bears are high. KDP will probably be dropping another percent or two, and when it does, you can make a really good decision. Either way, with proper risk management, it'll be a low-risk opportunity. KDP, I watched this. Did, I do love what I see. Next is MAA, Mid-American Apartment Community. This is a absolute juggernaut on the S&P 500, I believe. Really nice trend up. It's just been crushing it, just been cruising. And again, you may be looking for a move of like 4 or 5%. We're not really going to be hitting out of the ballpark. But that's fine. Support is super clear at 198. The resistance super clear near 211 to about 214. Anywhere in there is fine. Higher lows, higher highs across the board. No true pattern here. I mean, you could argue, hey, you actually have something more like this. Okay, well, maybe it's a horizontal triangle. Either way, you may be seeing some life probably towards $200 and some change. I think you need some patience. Give us a day or two, right? Let's come on down to us. The volume profile can be kind of concerning. That's so far down that the average volume is down here. But just like a planet in Pluto, the farther away from the planet or the sun you are, the less gravitational force it has. And so if you are really, truly like, what's it like 60%? What an eye, like 60% away from this. It's not nearly as strong as if you were like over here bouncing near it, right? So this is a good go long in my opinion. If you do lose the support, easy short then. But right here, it's a very good go long. Here's our first play where momentum becomes a factor. You can either enter off of value, which to me would be perceived at 202 or 198. You choose whatever you think it's going to be, or you can buy off momentum. The 10 crossover is really good. You cross the 10, you have really good two, three, four percent opportunities, you know, holding for a day to maybe a few days here. When you cross the 50, you have really good long-term week to two week kind of holds, right? Like you cross the 50, you rode this bad boy almost like three months here, right? So, if tomorrow is green, you want to wait for some form of confirmation. You get a green boy like this, the blue EMA line comes down like that, then it holds. You could buy into that momentum and then use this 10 EMA line, which will be something like this tomorrow. You can use this 
and then you can go ahead and use it as your stop loss. So momentum works, end value works. It comes down to you, my boy, my girl, whoever it is, dogs out there, I don't care. It comes down to you for risk management and trade, planning a trade and then trading that plan. So what we can see, wrong button, hello. What we can see is that a crossover is fine, value is fine, our side's low, stochastic, it's low, bulls and bears are tied. It makes sense, we're going sideways, it's been consolidating, so both these kind of dancing together does make some sense. MAA, a bit lower or a bit higher is a really good play. I would definitely watch this. If the Dow Jones shows some life, it could be really good. If the Dow Jones draw drops, which it's looking like it might be doing tonight, I would give it a little bit of time to get that value entry. MMA, MAA. I'd watch this. I do love what I see. Intermission. I see my cat. Duh, duh, duh. It's the cat intermission. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. He's sick of my shit. Kitty cat. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, he's having a good time, though. Don't worry. He likes when I do that kind of stuff. Next is SPH, my favorite wedge down I've seen in probably this week. It's really good. I also like NSTG. I didn't call it today, but I'll just show you. NSTG is an absolute snack, and so is MTW, right? The memory that I have on these things, it's absolute bananas. Uh, both also developing in a really good wedge down. Keep those on the watch list. SPH is a really nice one. Really good trend down. Really good support near this $15 area. Looks really nice. Again, I am concerned with lower lows and lower highs as most folks would be, but look at the size of these moves and these swings. You can see how they're slowly starting to constrict down here. Now, most wedge downs do break up and most wedge ups do break down, you know, but the important thing to note is this can still break down. I may just be, you know, seeing something. I don't think I am, but it's important to note that may happen. Supports there, resistance is clear. Trend lines are clear, patterns clear. POC wants to pull us higher. Everything here is a winner, winner, chicken, McDinner. Even the risk versus reward. I'd risk 3% maybe, four at most. You know, let's see if it's right or not. And then even without a breakout, it's still three to one. A breakout would get you like something near 10 to 15% pretty easily. SBH, a really nice looking Sally Beauty holds. I mean, Sally Beauty, look your best, right? Give me a sponsorship, Sally's Beauty. Jeez, I'm killing it. Uh, when it comes to our indicators, a 10 cross is fine, right? I mean, I wouldn't wait for it myself, but if tomorrow is like consolidating, taking its time, and the 10 EMA line drops down for us, there's a good chance we can play that crossover and be just fine. RSI, it's low. Stochastic, it's low. Bulls are low. Bears are high. SBH across the board is a value entry. I mean, you can risk 2% to make 10, and it's kind of market with a great setup like this. I think you should watch list it. I do love what I see. SBH is fantastic. I also want to watch MTW and STG. Can't stress that enough. They're just not ready yet, but they're getting there. Let them marinate. Next is SIX, Six Flags. Those old guy commercials where the dude's in the bus, it's just like, you know, he's like, duh, 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 duh. you know, good stuff. If you're a millennial, you don't understand. If you're a boomer like me, you get it. SIX is an easy short here. Uh, let me clarify. All right, I love me some amusement parks, okay? I love me some Six Flags. Cedar Point, what's up, Youngstown? Why, oh, baby? Woo, go Ohio, Toledo. So this is a really nice looking go long at 38. 37, snack. At 36, I'm going to have a conniption. I want to buy in. I want to buy low. So I want to buy in lower. But right here, resistance traditional and the POC. I mentioned the POC is the hardest resistance on this time frame. Look at it. It says sucks, 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 sucks. Keep stopping it, right? So right here, it's not showing life. Easy short. Again, you may get an easy 10, 15%. If you can go long, eventually, it makes a lot of sense. Lower highs, same lows, easy horizontal channel. If this does break out, I would say sometime by this year, 60 to 65 makes, very, makes a lot of sense for six wags. With bars opening back up, but again, until then, it's an easy short. Again, buy low, sell high. I would go long eventually. But currently, I think it's an easy short. Well, EMA lines, it just lost the 10 EMA line. Now, it bounced back over it, but if tomorrow loses the 10, easy short. If it loses the 50, absolutely an easy short as well. Both are playable right there. Our side's overbought. Stochastic. I can't say it's a bearish divergence until it solidifies, but this is definitely one. I'm going to go to right where the, there we go, where the stochastic is. This, this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a bearish divergence. Those don't line up. Not right. Incorrect. So that's an easy bearish divergence. Bulls are way overbought. Bears are super low. SIX is a very easy short here. Again, I would go long at 36, 37. Shoot, give me 38, big fella. I would definitely go long. And I think, again, fundamentally, 
makes a lot of sense. But I would like to see it just a bit lower and not just buy randomly. SAX, good watch with said nonetheless. I love what I see. Last is WAFD, Washington Federal. It's a really good go long. Important to note, I did cut through one little weird candle here. It was a gap and came right back up. But we can see right here, it's it's close. So if we do lose this trend line tomorrow, I would readjust my play to enter towards the POC, if not probably closer to $32, right? So if we do lose the trend line tomorrow, boop, even like even an inch, even a centimeter, even even an emoticum. If we lose it to 33 33 I'm pausing my play, entering towards $32 and some change. Great support down here in this area, easy resistance, higher lows across the board, horizontal wedge, higher lows, lower highs, right? 30 day time frame. It's getting tight. It's getting tight. Get it right. Bubba Sparks out here. And again, volume profile dead in the middle. Easy go long. If it breaks on farther, easy short, but I think it's a great value purchase. I wouldn't wait for a 10 EMA crossover. Again, what's like 3% away? Yeah, two and a half and some change. I'm not waiting for that. Um, it's just a great value entry. Right, RSI, it's low. Stochastic, it's low. Bulls are low. Bears are high. Overall, WAFD is a very easy play here. I think I want to see it closer to 32 if it breaks down literally six cents overnight i want to buy there and if it holds easy go long wafd i'd watch this i do love what i see thanks for watching the whole entire episode it means the world to me i'm sure only a few of you did but if you did it means a lot to me thanks hit that like button hit the subscribe button buy the bill buy the bulls.com is coming i appreciate y'all we'll see you guys on sunday today's thursday or wednesday today's wednesday right yeah i could do garbage today it's wednesday see you guys tomorrow for one more watch list i do appreciate it thanks i'm way looking